In this short video, I am going to give you some fundamental information about hydrographs. But before talking about hydrographs, let me give you some definitions. Let me talk about the terminology that I'm going to use when talking about hydrographs. So I'm going to start with um, runoff, defining runoff and different paths of runoff. So starting from paths of runoff. Okay, so first of all, let's define runoff. What is runoff? Water in flowing state is called runoff. This runoff can be divided into two categories. One would be surface runoff, which is water that flows over the ground. And then the other category would be subsurface runoff. As its name suggests, subsurface runoff is the water that flows under the surface of the ground. All right, so surface runoff is clear. It is sometimes called overland flow. Subsurface uh, runoff, however, has two other classes. One would be interflow. Interflow is the water that flows laterally from the top part of the soil into the stream. And then the other part is going to be base flow. Base flow is also called groundwater flow. Now that we know the classification of runoff and different terminology that we are going to use, let's talk about hydrograph and what a hydrograph is. To help me to define a hydrograph, I am going to show you a sample watershed. This is a sample watershed. These are the watershed boundaries. And this point over here is the outlet of the watershed. Now, let me show you the dendritic river network in this watershed. Perfect. So if you have any water in this watershed, the dendritic river network is going to collect that, that water and that water is gonna be collected at the outlet of the watershed. We are going to have a gauging station right at the outlet of the watershed that measures the flow of water out of this watershed. When I talked about the flow of water, I'm gonna show it by Q, and usually the units for this Q would be volume divided by time, so cubic meters per second or cubic feet per second. Volume divided by time. Okay, so we have a gauging station right at the outlet that measures the flow out of this watershed. All right. Now, let's say that we have a rainfall event, and I'm going to show the rainfall event over this watershed. These are the clouds. All right, so this is the rain over this watershed, and this rain is going to generate some flow, and at this point, we are going to measure that flow using the gauging station that we have. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I am going to show you the graph that we are going to have. On the x-axis, we are going to have time, let's say in seconds or in minutes, hours, whatever, and on your um, y-axis, you're going to have discharge or Q, stream flow, and this is going to be volume divided by time, right? It's flow. So I'm going to say, let's say cubic meters per second as an example. Before the rainfall, let's say that the flow was something like this. This is before the start of the rainfall. As the rainfall starts, I'm gonna show the rainfall by a block. This is the block of rainfall. Let's say that the rainfall is, the duration of rainfall is gonna be T sub R, and the height of this rainfall is gonna be P in depth. So this is the rainfall over your watershed. As the rainfall starts, understandably, initially, the parts of the watershed that are closer 
to the outlet are going to contribute water, contribute flow to the outlet. So slowly, this line is going to increase as different parts of the watershed that are closer to the outlet are contributing flow. Then after that, other parts are contributing flow to the outlet and then bigger and bigger until the entire watershed is contributing flow to the outlet. So this goes high to this point. Perfect. Right now, because the rainfall ends over here, then after the, when the entire watershed is contributing to the outlet, then the rainfall is done and it goes down like this. This point, we call it the peak of the hydrograph. And this graph that I have shown over here, this is called the hydrograph. So a hydrograph tells you the flow Q at any given time T. So there are a couple of things that I want you to understand when it comes to a hydrograph. Number one, let's see if we can, if we can uh, divide this hydrograph into the components that we have over here. All right, so this is the point. This is the point where hydrograph started rising, right? If I connect this point using a straight line to the other side of the hydrograph, whatever is under this, which would be this area, right? This volume of water, which is under my imaginary line, is called base flow. In other words, this base flow is the contribution of the groundwater to the stream. Now, above the line, which would be this area, is called direct runoff. What is direct runoff? I'm going to write it over here. So direct runoff is the summation of surface runoff and interflow. All right. Now, the last thing that I want to show you on this schematic figure, a schematic graph of the hydrograph, is how we can define different sections of the hydrograph. All right. So from here, from where the hydrograph starts to rise all the way to somewhere over here, this part represents the rising section, or we call it rising limb of the hydrograph. All right, so from this point all the way to a point over here, the end of the hydrograph, this section represents the falling section or falling limb or recession limb of the hydrograph. So as you can see, hydrograph is falling. So this section is called falling limb or recession limb. And the middle section is the crest region or crest area of the hydrograph. So in this short video, what I talked about is, first of all, the terminology that I'm gonna use when defining a hydrograph. And then I showed you how we can visualize this physical process of water contributing to the outlet of a watershed using a hydrograph. You might ask a question, how do we know how to separate this base flow from the direct runoff area? That's a great question. Here, I used a very simple constant method, a straight line to separate base flow from direct runoff.
but there are other graphical methods to do that as well. So in next videos, I'm going to talk about different methods of separating base flow from um, direct runoff.